Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog where I'm gonna be reading Caliban's War. So Caliban's War is the second book in the Expense series, which is a science fiction series. And I read book one a while ago and I really enjoyed it. And I will link the video for it in the description and up there if you want to check out my thoughts. And in that video, I also read the first novella, so book 1.5. And so in this video, I'm going to be reading the next two novellas, which are books 2.5 and 2.7. And I will be reading them after I read this. So I will talk about them at the end, like before my final thoughts for this book. And yeah, I mean, I was very excited to read this because I really liked book one and I especially liked the main character and his crew who we are going to be following along with the series. So definitely looking forward to getting into this. And I just want to say that there are spoilers in this vlog. And having said that, let's get into it. Okay, so I am on page 200, which is just over one third into the book. And this book starts with a prologue following a, I think, four year old girl. And she is like being picked up from school by someone who claims to be her mother, but we learn that she isn't. And there's also a doctor, and they take her somewhere. And she's like very confused as to what's happening because. You know she wants to find her mother because i mean her mother has left some time ago and so she's like oh my god my mom came back but apparently she didn't and at the end of the prologue she like they show her something and there is a big glass box and they have something inside and it says the thing inside looked up at the sound it was a man but he was naked and his skin didn't look like skin his eyes glowed blue, like there was a fire in his head, and something was wrong with his hands. And then, like, that is the end of the prologue. And then we are following actually four POVs, and I was expecting two, because we were following two in book one. But we are following four, even though, like, at the point that I stopped, they have, like, kind of paired up. So I'm assuming that from now on, we are basically going to be following still, like, two things, but still four POVs. But anyway, the first person we follow is Bobby, and she is a Martian Marine. And they, like, the tensions between Mars and Earth are still very high, and there is, like, a war starting and everything, and she is seeing, like, Earth soldiers, and they are, like, approaching. But then she realizes they are not, like, going to attack, they are actually running from something. And that something is the same creature that May saw in the prologue. And it says here, the figure chasing the six UN Marines wasn't wearing an environment suit, nor was it properly speaking human. Its skin was covered in chitinous plates, like large black scales. Its head was a massive horror, easily twice as large as it should have been, and covered in strange protruding growths. But most disturbing of all were its hands, far too large for its body and too long for their width. They were a childhood nightmare version of hens. They flexed and grasped at nothing with a constant manic energy. The earth forces weren't attacking, they were retreating. And then like that monster creature, whatever, kills like all the earth people that were there and also all the Mars people that were at that place, except for Bobby. And then she's trying to explain what happened to the people who then find her and see that everyone is dead except for her. And basically, the people from Mars think that it was the people from Earth who created that attack. And then the people from Earth believe that it was the people from Mars who created the attack. And she's saying that that's not what happened because the people from Earth were running and they were all killed. So she's, she's pretty sure that it was not an attack from either side. And then on Earth, we are following 
I don't know how to say her name, but it's it's written like Avasarala, but I don't know if that's how you say it. But she is also trying to figure out what happened in that attack. And she's pretty sure that it has something to do with the proto molecule, like from book one, that like landed in Venus, but she thinks that it has like found a way to come out of there and spread into the rest of the solar system. And so she's pretty sure that whatever creature that was is related to that. But everyone else is more interested in like actually starting a war with Mars and she's the only one trying to really know what happened. And then the people from Mars, including Bobby, they go to Earth to like have a meeting and discuss what the hell is going on. And again, everyone is just more interested in blaming each other and you know, continue the high tensions, except for Avasarala and Bobby. So they start working together. And that is one of the pairs that I was talking about that I'm pretty sure that now we are gonna see them, like, like I said, working together. And then the other two POVs are Holden, who, who is like the main character and who was the main character in book one as well, and who I love and his crew. And then the other POV is Prax. And he is actually the father of the kid from the prologue. And I think I forgot to mention, like, the attack and where the kid was taken from was a, like, the main Jupiter moon, which is called Ganymed, Ganymede. Yeah. And he, like, Prax is obviously looking for his daughter because he was trying to get her from school and realized that she had already been taken. And actually, there were... 16 i think 16 kids taken before the attack and they all had the same immune disease that his daughter has and they were all taken with like that one doctor they were all his patients and you know he's pretty sure that there is some sort of like weird thing going on and then holden who is now working for the opa like catching space pirates He's called by the OPA leader and he's told to go to Ganymede because he's needed there. And then he's like, the crew is there and they're trying to, you know, help people and figure out what happened as well. And Prax finds him and he asks him for help to find his daughter. And so that is the other pair I was talking about. And they do go together. They are trying to figure out what happened. And then they get in a fight with people they don't really even know, like, who they are, what they were doing there, and they find one of the kids dead. But that's not Prax's daughter, who... I don't know if I said her name, she's called May. That's not May, it was a boy that... He, actually, Prax also knew, and yeah, he's dead, and the other kids are nowhere to be found. And also, the woman from Earth, she has people, like, watching Holden, because, I mean, he's from Earth, and he is kind of on the run, like, he's hiding, and she saw that, like, she... her contacts told her that he is in, was in Ganymede, and so she has people following him. And now that she saw that he left with a guy from there, he thinks they're, like, involved in the attack, even though that is not really what is happening, but that is what she is thinking for now. And yeah, I think that is everything that has happened so far. And I am actually really invested and interested in what's happening. Like, I wanna, I wanna know. And I really like actually all four POVs, even though Holden is still my favorite. And I mean, especially because I just love the dynamic among his crew. I love them so much. And they're like so funny. Like the humor in this series continues to be like my kind of humor. And I mean, once they like all paired up, I got even more excited to see how they are going to work together and how they are going to fix this and how this is related to what happened in book one or like if it is at all because like she has that theory and like there is one thing that could indicate that it is what's happening but she's not sure and like no one is sure that that is what happened and so I am interested and intrigued about that and like I said I am really enjoying it but so far I think I like book one more than this not to say that I'm not liking it, like I said, I am, but I don't know. Book one was just giving me, like, the vibes that this one isn't, but still very interested and still really liking, like, the plot and the characters, and I will read probably another third, and I will come back to update 
on what happened and my thoughts on it. Okay, so I am on page 402 of Caliban's War, and I think I'm going to start with the part that has Vassarella and Bobby, because it's the part that I have the least to talk about. And basically, even though they tried to prevent it, Earth and Mars have really started fighting each other, and Bobby is feeling kind of like a traitor, because... She's no longer working as a Marine for Mars because, like I said, she was trying to talk about the truth of what happened with the monster and that it was not created by either Earth or Mars and they didn't want her to say that. And so she's no longer working for them and she, I think I said she's working with Vassarella and so she kind of feels like a traitor because she's working with someone from Earth, a politician from Earth, but she also knows that this is like the only other person who wants to prevent the war. And someone actually that was working for Vassarella tries to make Bobby seem like she is actually a traitor and that she is still working for Mars and that Vassarella cannot trust her, but she doesn't believe it because it is in fact not true. And they continue to work together. And Vassarella is actually sent to Ganymede and she takes Bobby with her. And when they were like when they enter the ship, they think that the people there are gonna go with them until Ganymede, but they were actually only there to like get them inside the ship and they are going alone. And that is pretty much what happened with them. And then moving on to Holden and Prax, they are still trying to find May. And they see that they find basically a lab that has something very similar to what the proto-molecule caused. So Holden is sure that it is connected to what was happening in book one because he was there, he was one of the people who saw like very up close what the proto-molecule caused. And so like he's pretty sure that Fred, so like his employer, is behind the attack because Fred was supposed to be the only person who had like the rest of the protomolecule that was not in Venus. And the rest of the team is not so sure about that. But either way, they try to, I mean, they run away from the station in Ganymede. And they see that they have one of like the creatures that was made by the new protomolecule in their ship so they try to like fight it and get it off and prax is actually the one that has a plan on how to do it and he's basically thinking that that thing that they had there was unquestionably the same technology but harnessed from some different application and it's saying that like he's watching what is happening but through like the screens and he's saying that the thing is trying to move up a radiation gradient and it's obviously been engineered to repress most of the changes and it's hardly changed the host body at all. There have to be novel constraints on it, but it still seems to need a source of radiation. Because in book one, the things that the protomolecule created, they did need radiation to like incubate and work, function, exist. And so this one seems to need radiation as well. And so they kind of want to lure the thing with radiation in another direction and like trap it and get rid of it. And they actually managed to do that. And so Prax was actually very important and useful. And so far he was just like there looking for his daughter, but now he was actually useful. So I appreciated that. 
And then they finally make it back to the place where the OPA is set up. And Holden talks to Fred and like confronts him about what he thinks, like that he is sure that he was the one behind the attack and all of that. And Fred, first of all, fires him, which Holden is actually happy with. And also like tells him, assures him that he had nothing to do with it. And at the same time, the rest of the crew is making a video with Prax trying to get help to find his daughter and the other kids. And they do manage to get money and also like a lot of people support. And they also get a tip from someone who knew like that doctor that kidnapped the kids. And so they talk to him. And one of the last things I read was them like realizing who that guy sort of was. And so it says, Carlos Marion had gone to work for Protogen. And Protogen was the company that had a protomolecule in book one and disappeared. He's come back as Strickland, a doctor of small children. So it is indeed obviously connected to the protomolecule and it's created for some other kind of purpose. And like I said, it doesn't change the host body as much because like with the protomolecule in book one, it was like, it didn't look human at all. It was just like a mess of organic matter. And these ones, it doesn't fully look human, but it looks close to human. Like it looks human enough to be recognizable and yeah that is pretty much where I'm at. Things definitely got more exciting and more interesting in this second third but like the one of the things that I really love about this series so far is like I said before the dynamic among Holden and his crew and it has definitely been changed because Holden was kind of losing it a little bit some of the people in his crew even said that he was acting like Miller, who was a character from book one, who was kind of a little insane. And so they were saying that he wasn't acting like himself and he was just acting like Miller and he was being irrational. And that is in fact true, but he has now recognized that he was wrong and he's trying to fix his friendships, his relationships. And I mean, I am hoping he does because like I said, I just, I love them. And on the other hand, I am definitely finding the dynamic between Vassarella and Bobby very interesting. I wouldn't say it's a nice dynamic. They are not friends, but it's definitely interesting. And Vassarella is definitely iconic. And oh, and actually, like the last thing I read was that Prax's ex-wife has also released a video, but saying that Prax was like, abusive as a husband and as a father and that she thinks that he killed May and he's like doing all of this to like hide it and I'm just like hold on a second is that tr I mean he obviously didn't kill her because we saw in the beginning that she was taken by the doctor and whoever but like was he actually a bad person I mean I'm hoping he wasn't because I was rooting for him and also like why is she doing that you know what I mean I I'm intrigued and yeah, we've gotten some action scenes, like some very cool action scenes with Holden and his crew and I love them and I want more of them. And yeah, I mean, there is where I'm at, but I am definitely liking it more after this second third and I will finish it. And I think I will read both of the novellas before I come back to update for the final time and just give my final thoughts. Okay, so I have finished Caliban's War, and first of all, 
Prax is not a bad person because we learned that the like bad people had his ex-wife and they were forcing her to say those things. So I was rooting for Prax and I was right to root for Prax. But anyway, following at first Holden and his crew, they are kind of having an identity crisis, but like a collective identity crisis because they don't really know what to do do once they finish this mission because they have been fired from the OPA and they also they don't have their old job like from before anymore and they're just wondering like what to do after this mission is done but they decide that whatever they're gonna do they're gonna do together and they are as adorable as they were before and things kind of like they all come together because Avasarala and Bobby they learn that the people who are using like the monsters as soldiers they are in fact from earth and they are following holden and his crew because they basically know like too much and they know where they are creating these monsters so they are following them to like kill them and Avasarala and Bobby realize that and so they also go after Holden and just warn them that they are in danger. And so they all get together in Holden's ship and they are discussing like why this is happening, like why they took the children. And then Prax is saying that they took the children because they don't have immune systems. And so they'd be easier to reshape with the proto-molecule. There would be fewer physiological systems fighting against the new cellular constraints. And the soldiers would probably last a lot longer. So basically, yeah, like they took the children so they could turn the children into those monsters and use them as soldiers, as weapons. And they are still being followed by the people who want to kill them. And they actually ask Mars for help because Mars and Earth are already like fighting so Mars would definitely like want to fight those people from Earth and they do get help and they also like they don't just want to bomb the place where they are creating the soldiers because there might still be children alive there and so they have two different missions they have to like stop those people from Earth and they also have to get the children and stop the creation of more monsters. But then we learn that the like those people that are following them that have the monsters in their ship, like some of them, they like lose control of the monsters and they are like being attacked by their own monsters, which I mean karma's a bitch. But basically Holden goes to that ship to like try to like destroy it and destroy the monsters and he manages to do that and at the same time some of like the rest of his crew they go down to where the children are being transformed into monsters and they first of all they have to fight some of the monsters which was pretty cool and also pretty disgusting and they also kill the like that doctor that had taken the children and they find some of the children alive and one of them is May. so she is finally reunited with Prax and yeah, I mean, everything seemed like it was going well. And then literally at the end of the book, the last chapter, I mean, there was still an epilogue, but like the last chapter, we learned that something was being created in Venus where the protomolecule crashed in book one, like the biggest part of it. And so it says, the dark side of Venus pulsed like a sudden planetary flash of lightning under the obscuring clouds. And then it glowed. Vast filaments, thousands of kilometers long, like spokes on a wheel, leaped white and vanished. The clouds of Venus shifted, disturbed from below. Prax had the powerful memory of seeing a wake on the surface of a water tank when a fish passed close underneath. Vast and glowing, it rose through the cloud cover, spoke like strands of iridescence, arsed with vast lightning storms coming together like the arms of an octopus, but connected to a rigid central node. Once it had climbed out of Venus's thick cloud cover, it launched itself away from the sun, toward the viewing ship, but passing it. The other ships in its path were scattered and hurled away. A long plume of displaced Venusian atmosphere caught the sun and glowed like snowflakes and slivers of ice. Prax tried to make sense of the scale, as large as Ceres Station, as large as Ganymede, larger. It folded its arms, its tentacles, together, accelerating without any visible drive plume. It swarmed in the void. His heart was racing, but his body was still as stone. 
So there is like a new monster, new, like a bigger, probably more dangerous, more concerning monster coming. So that's great. And then at the end of the epilogue, Holden was like obviously stressing out about what is coming. And he heard someone come from behind him. And that person said, hey, we got to talk. And it says here, Detective Miller said. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Didn't Miller die in like at the end of book one when he crashed into Venus with a proto molecule? Like what is happening? I am confused, but also very excited to continue with the series. But before we go into my final thoughts, I am going to be talking about the two novellas that I read. And the first of one was Gods of Risk. And this one was like it was set after the events of Caliban's War. And it was in Mars when we were following Bobby's nephew, who was called David, I want to say. And Bobby was also there. So it was after this, after she was no longer working as a Marine from Mars. And she was also no longer working for Vassarala because she just doesn't know what to do with her life. And so we are following David and he is a chemist and he is actually working for a drug dealer. So he is like producing drugs for him. And also there is a friend of him that is in need of help. And we are just seeing him manage all of that. And also we see Bobby being very iconic. And yeah, it was fun. I was interested in what was happening, but it was also like nothing amazing. And I gave it three stars. And then the other novella was called Drive. And this one was set 150 years before the like the, the series started. And we were basically following the creator of a very important like invention that was like very necessary for the world to be the way it is in the series. And I mean, yes, it was fun to see how like that happened, how it was invented, how it was created. But also I didn't really care about the guy or his life or his relationships. And that was, I didn't care really. So the only fun thing was like, the end basically and I mean, it was okay I didn't hate it but also didn't really like it and I uh, gave that one 2.5 stars and now let's go into my final thoughts for Caliban's War so first of all starting off with the characters as I usually do and in this book we have four POVs which kind of had me worried because I was concerned I wouldn't like some of them as much as the others but actually I did like all of them and I feel like I like like the three other characters more than I like Miller in book one and I mean Bobby and Vassarala were both like icons and I mean Prax was okay I didn't really like like him or dislike him but his POVs were still fun because we were still following Holden's crew so it was still almost as entertaining as the chapters from Holden's POV. And speaking of Holden, he was still my favorite, especially after he got his shit together and his dynamic with his crew was like back to how it was before because I really love them. They're like found family and I do love found family. And yeah, they're adorable, but they're also very, very funny. And just like in book one, the action scenes were amazing and I loved every single one of them. And I also really enjoyed the plot, but there was just something that I didn't love as much as I loved in the first book. And I don't really know what it was. Like, I don't know if it was the pacing or exactly what it was, but I really liked it, but not as much as book one. But it was still a very good book and it definitely got me very, very excited to continue with the series because there's this whole new monster, whole new threat coming. And I don't really do like points to five or 0.75 stars but like if I did I think I would give this 3.75 because it's definitely more than 3.5 but I don't know if it reaches like a four star but it's definitely closer to four so I am gonna give this one four stars and so yeah that is everything for this video and thank you so much for watching I really hope that you have enjoyed it and if you did give it a like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye!